lot going on this month. I really see the energy being a lot more relaxed. Um, especially because we're in a storyline, the North Node Axis, which has been in Cancer and Capricorn since 2018, is rounding up. That's right, we're getting an ending to whatever area that's affecting your chart. With Cancer and Capricorn, it's been a big deal, and we're going to end that energy on the 4th or 5th of July, depending on what part of the world you're in, with the lunar eclipse in Capricorn. Um, that's on the 1st first, the first of July. We also have... Aries moving into Mars, Mars moving into Aries, the sign of Aries on the 27th, and it's going to be there for a whopping six months. So Mars is going to be doing a lot in your chart as well. Um, we also have a new moon in the sign of Cancer, which signifies a blue moon because this will be the second new moon that we'll be having this year, which is pretty rare. And yeah, let's just get into it. We have a lot of new, um, a lot of new energy coming in in the sign of Cancer as well as Mercury coming out of retrograde and Venus now being direct. Let's get into it. What's up Sagittarius? Welcome to your July 2020 forecast. So on the 1st of July we have Saturn going retrograde back into its ruling sign of Capricorn. Okay this is going to be hitting your second house. So we also have more action on your second house. This is finances, 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 but we also have the lunar eclipse marking a big ending, a big end-all, dramatic end to this dance that Cancer and Capricorn have been doing on the eclipse axis with the North Nodes since 2018. So this has been affecting your 8th and 2nd house. Self-worth, value, boundaries in, in terms of finances, other people's money, joint resources. Could have been sharing money, sharing resources, food, um, goods, or you could have just been the one more so being relied on to bring home the bacon in this case. And now you're starting to notice that people around you are becoming more independent and you're having you're being able to relax and the financial pressure is starting to ease up. Also, your self-esteem could have taken a hit in the last couple of years or you just could have been taking time out to rebuild and do some inner work, some inner healing, some psychological healing, just negative talk. Saturn can be quite depressive energy and it could re represent restriction and boundaries and um, even, like I said, can encourage depression. So with it transiting your second and eighth house axis or with it um, highlighting that, between cancer and cancer being in your eighth house and cancer being very you know a very yeah with cancer being really just an emotional sign and just about roots and just familiarity and what you're comfortable with your comfort zone I just really think that you were just kind of getting used to people around you being dependent on you or even your family cancer does represent family as well so yeah there could have just been a lot of that playing out for you um, in the last couple of years. Um, also home and family, like I said, home could have been a big theme or emotions or your family's emotions. You could have been um, dealing with emotional people around you or you could have been the one that was quite emotional during this transit or just been focused more on like business. I just get this like breadwinner versus like someone home staying home and doing like maybe like the cooking or or the crying like with because this is like second eighth house this is other people's money versus your own value your own resources so someone seemed to be more financially dependent on the other in your life or like with cancer and capricorn there was like a push and pull between emotions versus like everyday work everyday routine maybe your family could have been distracting you from your work or your work could have been distracting you from your family or you use your work in order to like help out family or something like that and this is all coming to an end like I said family members around you could become more financially independent and you can see yourself having more freedom on your own to be able to enjoy things enjoy the fruit of your labor on the fruits of your labor exclusively we also have on the 20th of July a new moon in cancer at this in a 28th degree so that will be hitting up your ninth house of philosophy of long distance travel, of foreign culture, of belief, of sudden luck, you know, of, um, of just random blessings. You know, it's really positive, energetic house. So 
with the new moon being there, are really just kind of seeing this time where you're getting to like either spark a new journey through, like through education, maybe you go back to school, maybe you end up getting an unexpected loan, or maybe you start getting some help, some good karma starts coming back to you because of what you've contributed to those around you in the last two years with the North and South Node axis being in Cancer and Capricorn. New moon spark new beginning. So with this new beginning taking place in your ninth house, you could very well take a trip or get a ticket, you know, or like put put down initiative toward doing that. Or this would be a great time to do that. To invest in a trip or plan towards a trip or start looking at different like planning a trip, you know, on like trip advisor, just like seeing different places or just Trying to figure out where you want to go or how you're going to get more freedom to explore outside of like your family. And like, because ninth house is the opposite of the third house. Third house is also family in a certain sense too and like your roots. So I get the feeling that you're wanting to like delve out and do something on your own. Just be, you know, you are Sagittarius. Okay, you do rule the ninth house. So you very well could just be one to explore, do some self-exploration or explore your own philosophies, your own thought patterns or just get away just to be able to get some mental clarity and get more peace and freedom to run. Maybe you want to do more like leisure recreational activities, more um, more sports, get your body moving more. Or like I said, you could just want to get out of town and travel somewhere long distance. Then, OK, we also have Mars and Aries that's been transiting. That's Mars has been transiting Aries since the since July 27th okay so this has been in your fifth house lighting up that area for you romance fun recreation kids um, pets flings you know like you are Sag rising I can just see you dating heavy right now you know getting out there getting more on the party scene getting out of quarantine just turning up a little bit more just communicating with like lovers or just kind of trying to see what's up in the dating world. You could have spent a, a while just focused more on just a lot on work and money and stability. You could have just been weighing heavy on you in the last two years. And now with this new moon happening in your fifth house, I'm sorry, with Mars transiting your fifth house, you're going to be revved up and you're going to be driven to just be more available on like the dating scene. like, And you're going to be more expressive too. And just a lot more fun, a lot more life of the party. Um, Mars is sex. The fifth house is flings. You could very well have um, a couple of one night stands or just a one night stand that turns into like a romantic connection like from the past because Mars is in retrograde. Remember, and we also have Saturn retrograde in your in your second house. So with this throwback energy, a lover from the past could very well come back um, or kids could in some way affect your romantic life or your sex life in some way. Children could affect your sex life around this period of time. And this is going to be a six month stretch. So, you know, this is also a great opportunity. This is also a great time for you to get things done creatively. Anything fun that you wanted to do, any concerts that you might have wanted to go to, anybody that you might have wanted to ask out at this time, this would be a good time to do that. Anything with pet involving pets or children, you know, doing something as far as like um, coaching a football league or a cheerleading, whatever you call those, that'd be a good time to get into that and just do something more recreational that you believe in, but you consider fun and exciting. You know, um, this, this could be also a good time to do something work related or something that could drive you to want to build on it career wise but it would still be creative or something that you would be considered that you would consider to be fun and that you would kind of be the center of attention and because the fifth house does rule like performance art and like mars and aries is kind of entrepreneurial energy so you could definitely be revved up to do something where you're kind of the focus you're kind of like the you're kind of center stage even if that's like teaching a course you know or being be in front of a lot of people teaching a zoom class it could be anything like that, that anything along those lines that could play out with Mars transiting, Mars and Aries transiting your fifth house for this long six months. 
You could just be more into music. Just more like exciting, more fiery, more hot headed. You know, like your self expression and your ego. You can get angry if, if people try to repress you or suppress you at this time. Because again, maybe you could just spend a lot of time in the last few years looking out for family and we're worried about like career and finances and family and home life. That you know, you could have just been bored recently and just want that freedom in true Sag nature. So, um, that's all I have for you for this July 2020 forecast. Good luck, Sagittarius. <laughs>